Hi, this is Aaron and Linda with Traveling Flamingo. Today we're in Nassau, Bahamas on the Celebrity Edge, and we're at our first port on our four-port Caribbean cruise. We're going to tell you everything you need to know about the port. Stay tuned to find out what we thought and how you can prepare for your day in Nassau. All that coming right up. So let's start with arrivals and departures. It is nice there is a dock, so no tendering is needed. Although having been being on the Celebrity Edge, I really do want to try tendering from that magic carpet sometime. The dock is not too long and there is some shade. It will take you about five minutes to walk from your ship off the dock. There are signs about masks, having masks on, and having your proof of vaccine. No one asked us for ours, but right now it's good practice to have a picture or a copy of your vaccine. At the end of the dark, there was a group of ladies who were offering some hair braiding, and it looks like a lot of people were taking that opportunity. I would add as well, uh, just to make sure you are following the mask rules of your port, uh, not every uh, country has the same uh, vaccine rates and so forth, so do pay attention and do follow that. We saw a lot of people who weren't, so highly suggest that you do. And also the uh, some of the excursions like Atlantis, which is that big... Uh, hotel with uh, the drop shoot uh, thing uh, that uh, requires vaccines. So if you're going there, you need to have proof of your vaccine as well. So make sure that's on you. On to the atmosphere of the port. We were the fourth celebrity cruise ship to arrive at this port. Uh, the effects of the last 18 months without cruising were very evident everywhere we went. A lot of the shops and restaurants that were on the main street right in front of the cruise ship are still closed. It's not a manufactured cruise port like you'd see in Costa Maya, for instance, uh, or other cities. After you walk off the dock, you're basically in the city area. The area is very much set up for tourism with lots of shops and restaurants. The market is just a block or so up from the port. And there's some great local shops uh, all within uh, the, sort of that regular tourist area with a bunch of your regular items that you would need like a Diamonds International uh, as a tourist. There are mugs, t-shirts, hats, bags, and a lot more. There's a couple of little shops that were open with food and drink, and we enjoyed a fresh, cold coconut water in a coconut, which was delicious. This is uh, probably one of Linda's favorite things to do while exploring on a hot day, and honestly, the coconut water just tastes so much better when you get it from a coconut than from the store. Yeah, that fresh coconut water is definitely one of my favorite things to get. If you continue through the market, there are more shops and restaurants. If you haven't got to a bank yet, there are a couple of banks just a few minutes away from the from the port. Uh, and as Canadians, actually, there's a couple of local Canadians, like banks like Scotia Bank and so forth. It was nice to get to chat with a few ladies who live there and to support local. We were also there on a Sunday, and some stores don't open on a Sunday. Another shop owner said that he isn't supposed to open on a Sunday because of COVID rules. But we imagine as tra travel starts to pick back up, many more stores will be coming back and opening up as well. There were also some locals offering glass bottom tours, glass bottom boat tours, <laughs> and taxis offering sightseeing trips around the island. We know that a lot of people don't like to book their excursions with the cruise line, so there are a few options to do them once you get off the ship, but they are limited right now. There are also some cool open air bars that look to have a really fun vibe that I really enjoy to relax in after shopping, so I can't wait for those to open back up. Hopefully it all starts to come back soon. As you can see, there's a lot of construction happening at the port. Uh, they have plans to, for a new terminal that's estimated to cost about $300 million. Part of the development is to increase the number and the size of the cruise ships that they can handle at the port. When the development is done, the port can handle three ships the size of Royal Caribbean's Oasis class, which is the largest ships with 6,000 passengers, and three more ships that are 3,500 to 4,000 passengers. So those would be like your uh, breakaways, for instance, the NCL breakaway. The construction started in March of 2020, a hard time to start construction on a cruise port, uh, but it's set to be complete by fall of 2022, and it seemed like it's pretty good to be on track for that. When the terminal is done, there will be a coral reef exhibit, a museum, an amphitheater, and bohemian art and entertainment uh, all around. The goal is to have an authentic bohemian experience and sell items made on the island like jewelry and bags. It looks great, and I hope it's successful, and feeds well into the stores that are already there so these shops get more business. 
If you're interested in learning more about other ports in the Caribbean, we have more port tours, including things like Cozumel and Costa Maya, Roatan, a whole bunch of other destinations if you want to know what the port's going to be like when your ship arrives. So check that out. The link will be in the first pinned uh, comment as well as the description, and there should be a card on your screen. In terms of food and dining, there is not a lot open right now. In the market, there are a couple of shops open with different food and drink options. Many of the popular restaurants are not open yet, like Senor Frogs and other bars. But as I mentioned earlier, they do look really awesome, and I hope that uh, they can open up soon. It did look like some were getting ready to open, so hopefully the cruising can continue and more restaurants can open soon. Yeah, it's sort of uh, funny and unfortunate in that like senior frogs which is everywhere <laughs> in the caribbean uh was closed and there was a subway uh that was also closed so you can even tell that uh, you know american firms are not opening up their uh restaurants nor you know senior frogs and so forth which are surprises those are things you usually see always being open so what's near the port if you're vaccinated most cruise lines will allow you to explore the port on your own be sure to check the rules for each port with your cruise and be sure to wear a mask if required. With Celebrity, we were able to explore on, your, on our own. We are focusing on what's right near the port right now, but we wanted to highlight a few options that aren't far away. The Edu Cultural Museum is just 10 minutes taxi ride away. This museum is dedicated to the Junkano Parade. I'm sure, uh, please correct me. I'm sure I did not pronounce that correctly. Uh, Fort Fincastle dates back to the 18th century and is a five minute taxi ride away as well. The Queen's Staircase was carved in the 18th century by slaves. If you're interested in a beach, Junkano Beach is walking distance from the port with drinks and washrooms. There's lots of other options and close things to the port, but these were just a few. Be sure to check out uh, what's open and what's not open as everything has different opening dates and times and places and things are still opening up so i'm sure there's a lot more things that you like to do uh, what's your favorite excursion when you're in nasa what uh, are so your memories of nasa what are your thoughts please let us know in the comments below so i wanted to give you an idea of what to bring when you're visiting the port this is just the port and you are right there in the shopping area so you don't need a towel unless you're planning to take an excursion or walking to the beach we always recommend having a little cash and credit cards so you're not stuck on celebrity you only need your cruise card to disembark but we always take our identification with us as well on other cruise lines you do need your identification to disembark and we have seen people sent back to their rooms to go get it actually there was one time we were on ncl it was a long wait to even get off the ship and sometimes your room can be far away so just make sure you've got everything that your cruise line requires in our backpack we like to bring some water sunscreen we had extra masks and our camera we like having a backpack. We can also put our purchases in it. Another thing that we like to take with us is a power pack. We've got this really cool, Aaron found it, of course, two-in-one travel power bank. You can plug it into the wall and it has USB charge ports, but then you can take it with you as a power pack. And when we're at the port, I do like to take the opportunity. I'm using my phone a bit. I'm texting my family back home and I've got some games that I like to play while I'm on cheaper Wi-Fi. So. I do usually go through a bit of power and you want to make sure that if you're using it for GPS that you, you've got some power ready for your phone. And I do see a lot of other people on their phones sort of connecting with family as well. So it's just nice to be able to, to charge back up. Also, we had a few stories from uh, couples that we met on the, uh, on the ship about NASA. Uh, so we met a couple. They did a shore excursion through Celebrity. Uh, they stated that a lot was not really open, and they were disappointed the museum was closed on a Sunday, so many of the shops were also closed. It is great that we're able to cruise again and travel with different place to different places, but it's still a pandemic. Many tourist towns were hit really hard by this pandemic, and this is just a friendly reminder not to expect it to be the way that it was before March 2020. There's a lot of other beautiful places to visit, people to meet, and local businesses to support. All in all, you can see here uh, how much was closed, and we're really looking forward to uh, to all of this opening up, right? So, you know, if you're going to travel here, do expect some things to be closed, at least for now. And hopefully, uh, you'll be able to sort of understand as it opens up what's going to be around the port for you, 
it's a bit of a difficult cruise port tour for us because so much was closed and uh, we couldn't really speak to everything that they've got there but we could see the potential and uh, we you know we really just wanted to echo that and uh, I think it's also a good reminder that we should be shopping local where we can in these ports because a lot of these ports are actually owned by cruises by like cruise companies and or affiliates of the cruise companies so try to shop local where you can and support the local economies Overall, we really enjoyed our day in NASA, walking around and meeting people, and we do look forward to coming back when more is open. So let us know in your comments below what is your favorite excursion or activity to do in NASA. Have you been there before? Do you have a trip coming up? We really do appreciate being part of this community, and every like, subscribe, watch means a lot to our little channel that's still growing. Thank you so much for watching, and happy travels.